Hallelujah. So victory, victory, right? The right. sound of victory. Amen. Hallelujah. We hear the sound of victory. So what we see always can be a trick, right? What we see sometimes can fool us but what we know. Uh -huh. You know, when we see our children acting up, sometimes we doubt how we did as parents, right? We say, man, what kind of parent was I? They're doing this, they're doing that. I don't know about you, but I've had those things as a husband. Sometimes I'm like, well, did I mess up on this thing? But what we know is, if you know that you've given good training, if you know that you've taught the right thing, then you just got to walk in that thing. That's right. So here in the sound of victory, we got to understand that what God has promised us and what God has, has proclaimed through the beginning of time still exists. Amen. It's still, it's not null and void. Uh -huh. So what God is doing, we have to really start focusing on God and stop focusing on our situation. Because the situation is always going to remain. That's right. Well, that's money right. issues, whether you're rich or whether you're poor, money yeah. issues remain. That's right. Relationship issues, whether you're rich or whether you're poor, remain. Marital issues, whether you're happily married, whether you're divorced, remain. <laughs> you know, um, parent ch child dynamic, they remain, right? Well, that's right. Um, let's be real. Black white relations, that's they right. remain. That's right. Racism, prejudice, they remain. But yet and still, we serve a God that bridges all these gaps. Yes, we serve a God that allows people of different backgrounds, different social statuses, different, yes. different financial means, different backgrounds, you know, whether they believe all their life, whether they came into church late, God has a way of bringing us all yes. together. Yes. And I think if we can embrace the difference and allow God to show us how those differences, he made us all different. Yes, so if he made us, he did it for a reason. So we can use those differences to come together and really make this world better. Amen? Amen? If God wanted us all to be the same, we'd all look the same. We'd all talk the same. We'd all walk the same. We'd all have rhythm. So folks like me that can't dance, he, I'd be able to dance. That's right. Folks like me, what you mean that's right? <laughs> no, amen. 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 So I don't have any rhythm. My wife says amen. Amen. I don't. Amen. So God makes us different, but it allows us to draw upon one another. Well, Everybody's not good at everything. But everybody's good at something. Amen? Amen? So that something is why we come to church. Uh -huh. Because that something is a gift that the church needs. That's right. right? That's that right. something is, is going to build up the church first. Mm -hmm. And then as we disciple in here, it's going to allow us to go out and reach other people. That's right. And, and our goal is not to reach other people to bring them back to church. Our goal is to reach other people and make the world better. Uh -huh. That's right. Because by improving someone else's circumstance, we improve the world. Amen? You know, we can, we can Facebook about our president, we can Facebook about how terrible this is or that is, but what are we doing to change things? Well, so it starts in our house. Right. It starts in our family. It starts with the love we show our own children. That's right. If they see it from us, they don't, they don't, it doesn't matter what the world does. Amen. If, they, if, if I'm telling my daughters before that first knucklehead boy how beautiful they are, when he says it, they're just going to say, I already heard that. Amen. That's nice. Amen. But if the first person that tells them they're beautiful is that knuckleheaded boy, well, all of a sudden, he's got their ear. Yeah. Don't ever let anybody have your have your children's ear before they have your ear. Amen. Amen. So show them the love and, 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 and the respect. That's good. As a man, my, my daughters know I'm going to hold doors for them. That's good. They know I pay for everything. Mm. I, I'm, I'm old-fashioned. Well, they know that I'm never going to eat before they eat. Amen. It's just the way it is. So today, we're just going to talk about being dressed for success. That's good. Amen. Dressing for success. Typically, when we hear about dressing for success, and I'm, and I'm a little undressed, so y'all give me a second, because I'm going to put on some glasses yes. for once. There. Now I can see. Mm -hmm. So when we hear about being dressed for success, it usually relates to dressing in a way that it's going to um, impress other people, right? Uh -huh. Dressing for success, oh, clothes, you've heard the expression, clothes make the man, it's a lie. Mm. <laughs> You heard the expression, oh, how you dress, you know. Okay, but what it does do is it changes your mentality. That's right. That's so right. when you feel comfortable, uh -huh. you're going to act comfortable. That's right. So that's why, you know, you can come as you are to church, come in jeans, come in suit, as long as you're going to worship, we're good. Amen. However, there is some power in dressing up. And, and the power in it is just a mindset change, right? Well, so when we talk about dressing for success, we have to talk about that mindset. It's a mindset with wearing the clothes. God's plan is for us to choose to spend the rest of our life with him. So if anybody asks you, what's the theme of the Bible? What is God trying to do? 
What is he doing in John 3.16? You go to a football game, you see John 3.16 here, uh -huh. John 3.16 there. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever should believe in him shall not perish, mm -hmm. have everlasting life, right? Right, right. Well, everlasting life, there's a difference between everlasting existence and everlasting life. Mm -hmm. well, so we're all going to exist forever. That's good. You know, whether in heaven or whether in hell, we'll, we'll all exist. It's whether we choose to exist with him or whether we choose to exist without him. That's really the choice. He gives us the choice, right? So his plan, and, and, and look what I said, God's plan is for you to choose to spend the rest of your life with him. God's plan is not going to force you to believe in him, to force you to fellowship with him, to force you to go to church, to force you to get saved. Uh -huh. That's not God's plan. God's plan is to show you how good he is, mm -hmm. and then... Your own common sense, your own heart is going to point to it and say, that's what I want. Amen. No amount of preaching is going to convince anybody to change if first you don't see something for yourself. Amen? Amen. It doesn't matter how eloquent I am. Uh -huh. The word's eloquent enough. That's right. So the change comes from knowing there's something missing in my life, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's what got me to church. Mm -hmm. No matter how successful I was, there's always something missing. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a beautiful wife. I have wonderful children. I have a good job. I have an education. Then it's all wonderful. But at the end of the day, that space that's still missing is God. Amen. He fills in all those gaps. That's right. That's right. When you don't know which way to go, God just fills it in. That's right. All right, so his plan is for us to spend the rest of our life with him. In, in opposition to this plan is Satan. Mm -hmm. John 10 and 10 says what? The, the, the thief comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. So his plan is not to recruit you. His plan is not to make you a part of his army. Uh -huh. His plan is not to convince you to join him in hell. His plan is to destroy you. Well, his plan is to cut off. His plan is to cut off your relationship with God. That's his only plan. To cut off your everlasting fellowship and relationship with God. And in doing so, also wants to cut off your relationship with each other. Uh -huh. So make no mistake, the enemy's pleased when he hears us complaining about the president. Mm. Well, Do I agree with everything he does? Not at all. And I'm not getting political, but what I want y'all to understand is, at the end of the day, God is our president. Amen. And we, we could not waste time on things we can't control, That's right. people we can't control, when our own circumstance is what we can't control. That, you better your circumstance, then the world gets better, just one by one. Well. My attitude dictates how my family acts. I wake up in a bad attitude, why should they be happy? Mm. I tell them to praise the Lord, but the only time they see me praising on Sunday... I'm kind of a, a hypocrite. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If they don't see me on my knees saying, Lord, I don't know what to do, why should they get on their knees? Well, if I can't tell them I don't know the answer, why should, I, why should they feel comfort when I say, it's okay if you don't understand? Mm -hmm. I don't know everything. Shame on anybody who says they know everything. That's right. I'm going to tell you, part of parenthood is throwing a dart up on a board and hoping it sticks. That's right. Come on. I mean, I, I feel for all, all of y'all that are the oldest, I feel for you because y'all are like, Test tube subjects. Oh, no. You know, we test it out with the first child. You know, the first child, we're all hands on with everything. They, we can't make any mistakes. You know, by the second child, you drop them, and you know, <laughs> by the third child, you, you know, it's like, well, you know. So we got we we got to understand that ultimately we don't all have the answers, but what we have is love for one another. Amen. Amen. You know, I love having a boss that. When you go to them and you ask for a question, they're like, I'm not really sure. Give me an hour. I like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know all the answers. I have a boss once that told me, I don't know as much as you know, but I know how to get all you guys to do to come together. Mm -hmm. And that's really my job. My, my, my calling is not to be more knowledgeable than anybody in here. Mm -hmm. My job is just to be more loving, to listen better, to listen more, well, and to uh -huh. facilitate everybody else having a voice. Uh -huh. Amen. Because people still have faith in God. People do not have faith in church. So where is the connection been lost? Relationships are gone. They're gone because people don't feel a part of it. When, when you come in a door and no one says hello to you, no one greets you, no one loves you, it's like the world. So why, why would I come back? When people don't take the time to know your name, I'm just another number. Nickels and noses, right? Get them in the seats. Give them the tithe and we're good. No, that's not what church is all about. Amen. Church is all about life changing. That's 
And I, people have changed my life through their testimony. Amen. You know, the, the, the secret behind being a pastor is you get more benefit than you give out. Amen. You know, really, really, everyone says, oh, the pastor this, the pastor that. The pastor gets each and every person's testimony, which is powerful. Mm. You hear something you might never heard before or experience in something. So when we talk about Satan, what he's trying to do is disconnect us from that. He's trying to get someone to say, oh, you don't, you don't have the education she has. You don't have a story like she has. Oh, you didn't go through what she went through. But if you really talk to people, you realize we all go through the same stuff. That's right. It's just a matter of connecting. Mm -hmm. And if we haven't been through it, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say I've been broke. Amen. That's right. That's okay for me. Amen. I'm not ashamed to say I've had to look for coins in my couch That's right. to pay for something. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I've had multiple, I've worked multiple jobs. I'm good with that. I'm not ashamed of it because I know that if, I, if I'm not ashamed of that portion when God brings me out and I praise him for it, yeah. no one yeah. thinks I'm right because yeah. it's not about me, right? Yeah. It's about God. That's so the enemy, what he wants to do is convince you that God has no use for you. Uh -huh. And he even wants to convince you the church has no use for you. You don't need the church. Actually, the church needs you and you need the church because the church is people. When he created man, he said, it's not good for man to be alone. Yes, sir. I'm going to give him someone to help him. When he sent out the disciples, he said, go, go together, right? Everything we do is together. Satan wants us to separate. He sifts us as wheat, right? That's what, isn't that what Jesus right. told Peter? That's right. And what that means is he takes one apart, and while you're by yourself, if you think about the, the, the worst times, the worst thoughts you have is when you're alone. Amen. Think about it in your own life. When do you feel the most depressed? When you're by yourself. When do you feel the most depressed? When you have time to think about your situation. Uh -huh. That's right. When, when do you hear those voices? Because we all hear voices. Amen. Some people want to say, I don't hear it. Yes, yeah. you do. Whether you act on them or not is the difference between being in jail and not being in jail. But the voices are there. Uh -huh. It's whether you say go home voice or whether you listen to it That's right. and give ear to it. That's what Satan can do. Realize Satan has no power to do anything you don't let him do. That's Amen. right. That's his power is, he can't make us do what we don't want to do. He, won't, he will not make me eat asparagus, no matter how much he tries. My wife would. That's a power that a wife has that, that maybe, you know. But think about this. I didn't say that Satan is trying to take your gift, your fellowship with God. He's trying to convince you to relinquish it. Because once you accept him, the only way that you lose him is by relinquishing it. By saying, I don't want it anymore. Salvation is yours when you, when you claim him, when you confess him, when you believe in him. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt be saved, Romans 10 and 9 and 10 and 11. Mm -hmm. But the only thing that will damage that relationship is if you tell him, I don't have any need for you anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in God. Wow. I don't believe in people. Because mm -hmm. some people think they can believe in God but can't believe in people. There's no way. Mm -hmm. You can't love him without loving people. Mm -hmm. Do I like everybody? No, no sir, no ma'am. But I have to learn how to love them. Mm -hmm. Okay? So here's what we're going to talk about. The problem is not Satan is too strong for us. Some of us are like, I can't. He said he's attacking me from all sides and I can't deal with it. The problem is we, get, we go into a gunfight with a knife. That's right. We do. Every time we go into this fight against Satan, he's got a gun, we got a knife. Mm -hmm. And we think we're going to beat him. We go in swinging. We go in thinking, if I just try a little harder, I just got to try harder. I just got to try harder. But we're punching the air. We're punching the air because he's not going to come at us like that. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about this. Two things. We're going to talk about his method of attack, and then we're going to talk about how we can dress to withstand his method. Okay. Okay, so we want to keep it practical. Amen? Amen. Preaching without practicality is kind of a waste. So we want to just teach this. Satan's method of attack. As the deceiver, Satan's never going to come at you straightforward. Uh -huh. The deceiver never comes at you. He's not going to walk up to you. Satan doesn't walk up to you and challenge you. Uh -huh. Satan walks behind you, always behind you, or always to the side of you, right? The Bible says he's like a roaring lion seeking whom to devour. Amen. If you study a lion, a lion, doesn't, a lion doesn't look for a prey and then go right at it. Mm. A lion is waiting. Waiting, That's right. hunting, uh -huh. waiting. Yes, sir. He waits until the one buffalo gets away from the, the rest, right? Uh -huh. He waits for the one, one animal to get away from the rest. Yes. Isolation. Yes. That's what the enemy wants. Isolation. 
So then once the isolation comes, the lion comes at that, at that animal, yes, yes. at that prey. Lions don't go after the toughest. They go after